Good morning and welcome to day nine. Last time we lost our first Pikmin, but I made up for it. We had a very productive day last episode and <laughs> without the loss of that Pikmin, I don't think any of that progress would have happened. You should be caught up on everything now, Yanni. According to Dingo, this castaway may just be our pilot. Oh, snap. Uh, um... <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Let me think. The primary symptom is the growing of leaves, is it not? If that is the case, then I believe we may be able to cure them. While stranded, I discovered a bewitching specimen called Luminol. It only appears in the dark of night. When dawn breaks, it releases a sap quite high in degradative enzymes. Mm -hmm. I believe I can make a medicine out of those secretions that can break down the newly grown leaves. Yeah. Uh, for real? I mean, that's that's cool, Yanni, but then they'll, they'll find out I just left Bernard behind. And what if it isn't Bernard? Colin's been kind of acting weird lately, Dingo. Dingo. Are you going to confront Colin about this, Dingo? Dingo, are you a coward? You're Dingo! Alas, our friend Dingo here consumed all the sap that I previously collected. <laughs> nah. So new blood will have to perform some night expeditions to harvest the medicinal ingredients for us. Oh, it's nothing to lose sleep over, except... In the fact that you will not be able to sleep if you embark on this mission. Find me later and I'll teach you all that you need to know about night expeditions. Excellent. Thanks to Yanni, it sounds like we have a solution to our leafling dilemma. We just need weed killer and then the weeds will be gone. Now everyone, to your stations please. Please stand around idly and wait for Jeff, the greenest among us to ask us questions. Copy that, Captain. Dingo, why are you looking at me so weird? Hmm. Puddle, the stylist is looking for you. Is this Puddle? Oh, this is Petunia. Rescue corpse. Is there someone who needs rescuing? I don't recall seeing anything. Bear. I'm what? Oh, I'm a castaway. Huh? I was so busy looking around at the floor here, I had no idea. I forgot her name. Or her voice. Do you have more to say? According to Olimar's log, an onion, as they're called, will fuse with onions of other colors. Extraordinary. For the sake of my research, if you fuse any onions, please let me know. What? You've already made the onion fuse? Yeah! That was me. And that was me again. If you'll allow me a moment of selfishness, I had hoped to see the onion prior to fusing. Fuse four onions together. And we're almost there. Happily. Oh, to the one who saved me. You are. Thank you so much. Hey, have you ever thought it'd be fun to try it on a different look than your usual? You know, to really shake things up? Nipa. I'll let you in on a little secret. Your friend Puddle here is a stylist. That means I can help you update your look whenever. Oh, snap. Do I do this now? We've gone nine days with Jeff looking like Jeff Andonuts that... I, I, I don't know if I want to stick with that or not. Originally it was a joke, but I don't know. Let let's say bye for now and then maybe I'll toy with it off screen later. I'm not sure. Man, I kinda like looking like Jeff. Oh, it isn't much, but please accept this. Yeah! Getting money and paid! Please, if you will, let me appraise as many goodies as possible. I tell you, I'm always excited to lay eyes upon a new treasure. A hundred treasures? Is that the total? No, wait. No way that's the total. 
Look at those adorable features and darling pr proportions. This creature may be rather medium in size, but that does not mean it is a medium amount of cuteness. No, I am quite certain it possesses enough cuteness to charm an entire planet. What a sweet stick this is! Quite literally. This stick here is made of candy from top to bottom. This unexpected combination makes it quite the handy thing to have around. You can use it as a walking stick to prevent yourself from stumbling while hiking or exploring unfamiliar terrain. When all that exertion makes you hungry, you'll find sustenance right there in your hand. A useful invention, to be quite sure. It's said the two colors in this cookie bring good luck to one's family and to one's business. In fact, it was tradition here for families to gather around a cookie and eat it together. There's even a saying about it. The family that eats a cookie together gets rich together. I've heard that many times, actually. Um, my family uh, never had a cookie, uh, enough money to buy a cookie, and so we never ate one. And because of that, we're all poor. Um, and it's really just a lesson. Those who are rich enough to afford cookies are those rich enough to stay rich. This is... Yeah, it's, it's a sad allegory. Step through this glowing blue hoop, and you will feel its healing effects almost at once. Exhaustion is gone. Ailments of the heart and the body banished. You have but to make the choice to step through it. I wish it did that. Do not be fooled by its silence. You are in the presence of the most intelligent life form in the known universe. Based on its appearance, it's clear this creature can exude feelings of joy and delight. It was likely at the center of many social gatherings long ago. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> How did you re reach that conclusion? Also, a, a question arises, if I only got one of these, would I still get credit for this? And there were only three of these. And I now have six? I have many questions, none of which will ever be answered. I'm almost certain one could use these knobs and curves to connect this fragment with other fragments. But why? What would one accomplish by doing such a thing? Quite puzzling, no? Perhaps the partial picture seen here would become more clear with more fragments. Yes, that must be it. How clever. And though the big picture here remains unclear, the activity itself is clearly quite fun. A another question occurs. I think that these puzzle pieces in or suggest that there there's going to be a completed picture of... Uh, once this set's done, right? Like, obviously all these pieces will be put together. Nintendo won't just leave it to us to Photoshop these together. Which means, if that's the case with this, that's probably the case with all of these. All these probably will form some sort of complete mural. I would think, right? Anyway. Flaky layer upon flaky layer of buttery, mouth-melting dough baked to golden perfection. Indeed, this is temptation in bread form. You will try to eat a reasonable amount, but some strange force has hold of your taste buds, and thus reasonable has no meaning. Devastatingly delicious. Uh, <laughs> I kind of wish I had a face cam for that, because without even thinking, I, gave, I, I did air quotes. <laughs> Try eating this fruit when it's green and unique and unripe. I almost said unique. And you'll end up with a mouthful of acidic burning. But give it time to ripen, and it will not only taste sweet upon the tongue, but restore your energy and give you the endurance to realize great ambitions. This device plays a beautiful melody that it elicits feelings of nostalgia. There's something so familiar about it, and yet at the same time, it's completely unknown. Mysterious, to be sure. Crying when you want to cry, laughing when you want to laugh, acting on your every impulse without ever worrying about the consequences. Ah, to be, be a baby again. This treasure elicits feelings of nostalgia for that time, and memories of the love and joy a baby can bring. Ah, yeah! On Hokitate, the ancient statue head is almost as popular as the gyroid bust! Yeah! Yeah! With her cute goggles and dramatic personality, this statue oozes a mysterious aura, so the competition between the two makes sense. But what's even more mysterious is this figure's missing body. That makes me really happy.
<laughs> I like that. What's the temperature? Oh, wait, 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 before I get into that, uh, observe. 38, or 36.8, which is natural body temp. Huh. Touch the tip of this device to your cheek, and you'll find the number that appears on those ma on there matches the warmth of your heart. When faced with stress or anger, apply the sensor to your skin. Is the number higher? If so, it's time to focus on keeping your cool. Oh, we can see these too, I forgot. This desk features a built-in display that surely used to show important things, such as maps and visual s and vital statistics. No doubt many heated discussions have taken place over the matters shown here. One hopes that those who, who worked and fought at this desk also took breaks for rest and frivolity. Nope, we didn't. Okay, what is this? What is this? I, I totally forgot what this is. I know what this is, but I don't remember what it is. Future pal, help me. Help me, please. This is killing me. I know what this is. Help me. <laughs> this yellow plank, simply marvelous. The text upon it is indecipherable, yet somehow moving. Could it be some sort of story? A masterpiece, I'm sure of it. How exasperating is it, it, it is not to being able to read it, even as it sits right here before me. This plant grows very fast, which makes it a joy to tend to for garden enthusiasts. It also makes a great snack. Isn't it nice when the, a thing brings happiness to your life in more ways, more than one way? I say th those are the sorts of things worth keeping around. And of course, this is a bamboo sprout. This gourd selling point is the diversity of ways it can be eaten. Boil it, bake it, or fry it. It all works. As an added bonus, when you stand it on on end with the stem up. It looks like a fellow with a crew cut. Ha! And? Last one. This mysterious stone is quite heavy, but once it's rolled, it's relentless in its pursuit of fate. Six sides and six paths await you. Where the roll lands, there goes your life. And how, or now, can you must master the work of art that is your fate? Do you wish to change it? The future. To drop by. Again. Probably tomorrow. Or never again. Yeah, honey. Thank you for your help. I feel like an empty place inside me is being filled. To the bell? Ah, the feeling of perfection. We have a lot of grub dogs to get through today. Also, this is new. I mistook it as a uh, as larva, but it is it's in fact its own new-ish new type of bulb orb. Albino dwarf bulb orb, first molt. Among all the naturally charming dwarf bulb orbs, this one might have the most attractive and well-balanced conformation. When night falls, the eyes of these fascinating creatures emit an intense glow. Whether to mesmerize prey or to help it spot others of its kind, it's an intriguing ad adaptation. I could stare into those shining eyes forever. An imposter posing as the offspring of an orange bulb orb. It resembles a, the orange bulb orb in every way. Not just in the obvious shape or but even down to its sharp senses, alert to each sound and movement in its vicinity. What a lovable little impersonator. If you approach it while it's sleeping, it will immediately wake up, leap to its feet and peer around nervously. With such finely tuned senses, it is no wonder this bulbob can get a bit sleep deprived, though its big bloodshot eyes look surprisingly cute. This little darling is always with its beloved mother. But when it grows up, it shall drive it away. Though it may seem cruel, she helps it develop the confidence to survive on its own by forcing it to fend for itself. Such practical creatures could teach us a lot about learning to get by in the world. Also, second molt. Because... 
the bull bear is the third? Maybe? One glance and you'll never forget them as long as you live. Those unmistakable bold lips, a most distinctive feature, the likes of, of which I've seen nowhere else in the universe. When I gaze upon them, I wonder if the lips serve double duty as a way to feel the world around it, since this cute little cuddler has no fingers. Vegeta, I would destroy you without a second thought. Its narrow snout houses an amazing prehensile tongue. Aren't all tongues prehensile? Hmm, questions for later. It sets its sights and slurps its target right up. The sweet little bean uses this marvel of evolution with great skill. Any creature with a dexterous tongue like that is unlikely to ever go hungry. The striking polka dots along that expansive hide provide the very image of royal splendor. While that regal presence essential for queenly quality might throw you off your guard, her grand, lumpy figure has more than just visual impact. When provoked, this charmer will roly pull you over and squash any threats. Approach with the utmost caution. It has broad, moss-covered flanks and a head like a desert, complete with big, drooping jowls and small, googly eyes. This creature appears to be quite moody, but it does have a cooperative streak. The way this temperamental, bulbous giant cohabitates with others of its kind is quite surprising. And that's, uh, that's the Grub Dog family so far. Normally, I only read one line, but it, it felt wrong to stop here, or honestly, stop anywhere. We, the Kingdom of Beasts needed a better follow-up than that. Great to see the family getting along. There are enough new additions to the shop that I think I might need to talk about them. Normally, I just explain what I've bought, but I think we're getting to the point where I'm, I'm realizing that I can't get everything, and I have to explain why I di I'm not getting some things. Uh, the mine. It's a, it's a bomb. It's a bomb rock that is a, a sticky grenade. Um, I don't think it's really going to be used as, like, a, a trap. I suppose it could, but, uh, I, I think the, the value of sticking it to an enemy as they show here is better. And this, the lack in, um, in accuracy you get from the bomb rock is to its detriment, and this fixes that at the cost of being more expensive. As for the gear, we have, home. Oh, we have so many options. Idler alert? Like, we can now call in Idle Pikmin. That's great, great stuff. We have the Headlamp Plus, which I actually, unfortunately, will be getting, which is probably good. Um, it's probably good that I'm getting this because I was going to talk about this last episode and I forgot. But I will remember this episode to talk about my gripes with this kind of feature in Pikmin 2, not this game. But if we're going to be heading into, into darkness, I think it makes sense. Next, there are a bunch of different uh, variations of defense for our captains and our dog, uh, but what I want to fixate on are the rush boots. My dog's damage I can heal. I still have bones. I get bones all the time. So I think rush boots are going to help my Dandori, and technically they're going to allow me to gather idle Pikmin, and then I'm going to start saving for more expensive things because this, I think, is, is just solved by having good Dandori. Come back and see me! <laughs> to ensure the success of a rescue mission, I have smoked many drugs. The past couple days, I've had Pikmin uh, kind of stranded at an old base in the ground, and I just wasn't able to justify the time it takes for my captain to go out of their way to pluck them. But with Ochi now able to pluck them, it's going to help a lot. Oh, she's even more powerful than before. Well, hello there, new blood. It'll be nice to have a fresh subject around here. <laughs> Since we'll be working together, you can just call me Yoni. No sense wasting valuable research time. I need you to go out on some night expeditions for me. I want you to harvest extracts from the luminals that I can use as medicinal ingredients. It's only possible at night. 
I could go on, but you sh should just see it for yourself. Let me know when you're ready for a nighttime treasure and I don't so know why I put treasure in there. A nighttime adventure. We're doing it. These areas have been approved for night expeditions. Looks like a good place to start exploring, is it not? Oh boy. We're jumping into it. Ooh, these have danger levels. Yeah, ancient arches. We're doing it. Yeah. Our first night expedition was something I've been excited for so long. Sunset's not quite here yet, but I didn't read. I'm sorry. I speak very quickly when I'm excited about the night of which I will not be traversing. You will. So uh, it's really a vicarious excitement. The Starlight Speckle Terrace. Oh, here we go! It's been three Pikmin games. Th the entire franchise where we've been teased with this. And finally we have the autonomy to choose to stay here at night. I'm so excited. It's my first glimpse as to what this place is like. We've never seen it before. We've always seen it at dusk. But now we get to see it in the full darkness of night. There it is, new blood. That is a luminal. When dawn breaks, it will release an extract that I'll use to make that medicine. But if the luminal is destroyed, we won't be able to harvest any extract at all. All you need to do is protect the luminal until morning. Simple, right? <laughs> well, well now. What is this? These little creatures weren't here before. Let us observe them and see what they do. It's a star bit. Or Compito, which actually... Hopefully this gets on the mic. Compito is one of the oldest running, I guess, things on the channel. The very first Let's Play, I learned of its existence. It's, uh, it's what Gratitude Crystals are in Skyward Sword. It's what Star Bits are in, uh, in the Mario Galaxy games. And my sister, Nova, went to, uh, she went to South Korea a while ago, and she brought back Compito, which is this sugar candy, and I actually have one in my hand right now. That's the exact size, or sh uh, exact coloration of what they just threw in, and I will be eating it during this episode. Look at that. It propagated more. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, new blood? You know, as with other other games that introduce new Pikmin, it's funny to think that we could have discovered these in Pikmin 1. But these guys in particular, all that was stopping Olimar really was just staying out past dark. If he hadn't gotten that engine in the first day and been able to uh, leave the planet and entered orbit, we would, we would have seen these guys. Yes. Those little guys sure look like a new variety of Pikmin to me. They're kind of glowing, so Glow Pikmin seems like an appropriate name. Crunch. They're so cute and... weird. Huh. They're rather fond of you, new blood. That's perfect. You and these little guys can protect the Luminal together. No. That star-shaped fragment from earlier. Let's call it a glow pellet. Try carrying those to the Luminal to see if we can pro propagate more glow Pikmin. I leave it to you. Glow Pikmin! I wonder what these guys are like. Uh, we can swarm them as normal. They're not flying Pikmin. They're not pink Pikmin, it looks like. Oh. Ochi! Ochi! 
Drop it. Bad dog. Okay. I, I, I wonder, I wonder what powers they have. I know they have like a crazy, crazy attack that we have yet, that we'll see eventually. There are some enemies over there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's about that time, new blood. The blood moon has begun. New moon. See how the creatures become more aggressive at night. They're drawn here by that irresistible glow. Watch out now. They'll come for the luminal, so don't let them break it. Not no. Ah, they're heading this way. For now, collect glow pellets and propagate more glow pikmin to build up your protective forces. The creatures will keep attacking until dawn, so do your best to take them out. Okay, it's up to you, Ochi and Jeff. Good luck! Okay, if he's headed this way, then I need... Are we good? Wait, what, what's happening? Ah, glow pellets can be, cr can be carried here, too. From the looks of it, this could be a juvenile form of aluminal. If that's the case, then it's possible this could be connected to the luminal below ground. Maybe it could serve as an interim drop point when transporting glow pellets from far away. Additionally, it seems like it could act as a decoy for the creatures to help keep the luminal safe. It's small, but it shines quite brightly. Why don't we call it a, a trick null for now? Good thinking. Try using it as a decoy and an interim drop point. I'm kind of, I don't, really don't have a lot to say, so that is what I all I got. Okay, uh, they're gonna drop it there. Um, and then uh, they have, oh, they appear back with me? They like teleport, oh, they teleport. Okay, that's one way in which they're different. They're attacking a Tricknull, oh, sorry, they're, they're attacking a Tricknull, new blood. Are they? Oh, a Tricknull, okay. Do I need to protect the Tricknulls? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, uh, it looks like I do. Okay, so let's let's head over to that. I am faster now, and I need to talk about- Okay, alright. That's good to know. I wonder- It's completely destroyed. Alright. Uh, Ochi. Wait. Get ready to dash. They're gathering up. They're excited. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, and they just- Wah! Camera. It looks like they tell- That's their strong point. Is they teleport when they're they're done. Uh, enemies when they die just despawn. One two. And uh, let's talk about my upgrades real quick. Uh, I I got these. Uh, Ochi, I need you to go back to. Oh, that's weird. Uh, go back to base. I I got uh the upgraded headlamp. Yeah, I'm not going to. I... Oh, I got the upgraded headlamp because we're going to be... We're going to be uh, coming here at night. And I got the uh, the dash shoes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, Ochi, you're there. Yeah, you're fine. Switch. Kill him. Okay, we're fine. So I got the... I got the dash shoes in order to, uh... Move faster, and obviously, uh, but that's going to be really helpful, and it's going to honestly make up for a lot of upgrades for a long time. And then I got the additional light, both because I knew we were going to be coming here at night, uh, and because of, obviously, caves. Uh, and also because it, it didn't look too obnoxious. Can I move my base? Maybe not. That, and that was one of my problems in, in Pikmin 2, actually, was... Uh-oh. Get ready. We have a charge attack. Spirit bombs, Kamehame! Huh. Huh. Alright. Uh, let's swarm these. That was one of my big problems in Pikmin 2, is, uh, the... <coughs> The upgrade in that game that gave me the ability to 
light up caves, uh, ended up kind of ruining, uh, let's go back over to Ochi. It ended up kind of, uh, ruining the feel of caves because they're all now these, like, perfectly lit affairs that didn't make any sense. Or not, didn't make any sense, but, like, they are perfectly lit affairs, and they didn't feel like caves anymore, and it was too easy to see. Which this game, honestly, has done a great job at fixing. Uh, notice I'm playing as though I don't really care if my Glowman die to sunrise, because honestly, I don't think that matters. I feel like these are more challenges than anything. Well done, new blood. Here it comes. Pay attention, new blood. Whoa. That is a condensed luminal extract. It's very high in degrative enzymes. I believe we should call it glow sap. It is a critical ingredient for the leafling cure. Gather it with care. Look, the glow pikmin have come to see you off. Do they want to follow you back to the rescue command post? Uh, uh, uh what was? What? My, what is this? Glow pikmin turn into seeds. I need to study this up close. Please bring some back with you. Exploration day nine. Did that count it as a full day? It looks like it ranks us on enemies defeated, which is an odd way of doing that, considering that doesn't seem to be our objective. What a, pr a fruitful harvest! From one glow sap, I can make exactly one cure. Awaiting cure. The purple man. <laughs> I guess we'll find out his name in a moment. And we collected nine of them. I don't know what determined how many we collected, but we have nine. Okay. So, how was your first venture onto this planet at night? Uh, I have a lot of questions. Hi. Well, it had to be done if we're going to save our pilot, so hang in there. Oh. What a surprise, though. You met a whole new kind of Pikmin. Before you rescued me, I had never seen a glow Pikmin myself. I can only assume the Pikmin took a liking to you. You two should get as much help from them as you can. You are helping them protect their luminals, after all. Though, I'm not so sure you've got this night expedition thing fully under control just yet. Perhaps I'll go ahead and select the luminals for you to retrieve Glow up from, until you are. Ahem. I would like to remind you that you are not allowed to overwork my crew. I am the only one allowed to overwork my crew, considering I only work one of them. Huh. Well, that was new. And long overdue. Thank you, Nintendo, for finally letting us explore at night. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. See you guys tomorrow? I don't actually know if that was the end of a day. I feel like that shouldn't be, but... See you s sometime, I guess. I don't know. Bye. <laughs>